Welcome back to Hardball. Welcome back because we're going to have some Republican reaction now to President Obama's press conference, which he held today. Let's turn to Senator K. Billy Hutchinson of Texas, who's a member of the Appropriations Committee. Senator Hutchinson, are you worried at all about us facing a terrible situation where we have to choose between supporting an Israeli strike or joining an Israeli strike on Iran's nuclear facilities or letting them have a nuclear weapon? Are you worried about that down the road? Oh, of course. Uh, I think that that would be uh, a terrible situation where uh, we would have a weapon that is there, a nuclear weapon. Uh, but I, I will say, Chris, that I would not shy away from trying to destroy a nuclear weapon that might be used to destroy uh, Israel or uh, some other country in the area or be uh, in some way having exports of nuclear power somewhere else. It would be a terrible thing. But you wouldn't rule out a, a strike on uh, supporting an Israeli strike on Iran. Well, I can't say that. Uh, you'd have to know the circumstances and what is the evidence that there is a weapon. Uh, and again, I think that the countries that were actually put in charge of trying to uh, make sure that Iran was not getting a nuclear weapon are the countries that have leverage. They have embassies in Tehran, and that would be uh, France, Germany, uh, perhaps England. Uh, those are countries that could step up, and, and we, we ought to be more forceful. Russia and China should be more forceful with Iran. They have leverage, and, and they have relationships, and if we could get them to be uh, more cooperative on the Security Council, and America and the rest of the world could speak together with one voice, it would be so much more powerful than what we're seeing now, which is some countries speaking out boldly, America being equivocal, and Russia and China not even saying a word. My concern is when I read the op-ed pages of the major newspapers, they are chock full right now from the people of the American Enterprise Institute. The neoconservative hawks who got us into Iraq are now out there beating the drum to raise hell against Iran. They look like they want to create, once again, the war footing we were on before, create a hellish situation vis-a-vis -vis our relations with some country in that part of the world, and they wouldn't mind a war one bit. That's well, what scares me. The hawks are back flying around over the capital of the United States, urging on what they call an aggressive foreign policy, and we've been there, Senator. We went into Iraq under false pretenses. I get the feeling the same crowd, the same list, are out pushing it again. It's easy to talk aggression. It's tough to bury the wounded, I mean, bury the dead is what we've been doing over there. Well, Chris, I do think that um, if you go back to when the run up to Iraq came, uh, there, it was post 9 11, and there was the concern that there were chemical weapons, weapons of mass destruction that could be delivered out of Iraq into America. And that had to be the only legitimate reason to go into Iraq. Everything else, in my opinion, is not relevant except for that, and that was the reasoning that was used. Uh, I think you can legitimately question it, yeah. uh, and just taking out a, a bad dictator is not enough reason for me well, to put American lives on the line either. But if he had weapons of mass destruction, which has it has been proven the intelligence uh, was to us and to Great Britain, uh, then that was to protect America from being able to have delivered to us another weapon of mass destruction as we had already already seen tear this country apart at 9-11. Can a reasonable person like you of moderate conservative views, centrist conservative views, win a, 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 Demo a Republican primary in Texas for governor against a candidate, a character like Rick Perry, who's talked about secession from the union, who now enjoys, if that's the right word, the endorsement of Sarah Palin for whatever crazy reason has gotten her herself involved in Texas politics? <laughs> Oh, Chris. <laughs> I'm well, asking you a double all, question. A okay. secessionist who first has the of support all, of Sarah Palin, can you beat somebody with those attractive features? Yes. Well, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not mentioning or talking about Sarah Palin, but I'm talking about uh, running for governor of Texas. And I do think it is so important that we send out the message that Ronald Reagan sent out. Uh, I'm a conservative, but I want the party to be 
be growing and building and bringing people into our ideas by welcoming in them into the party, by holding to our principles while we say, here, here are what we believe in. We know you can't agree on 100% of everything, right. but we can form a party around basic principles of freedom, of uh, lower taxes, of entrepreneurship, and, and the American spirit. We can build a party around that, and we can argue about differences that we might have, but we should not repel people from the party, and that's what I think uh, has happened with Governor Perry in some instances, and why I am committed to trying to make sure that the Texas Republican Party does stay vibrant uh, and open and uh, willing to try to bring in new people that believe as we do. Good luck. Thank you very much, Senator Kay Belly Hutchison of Texas. Thanks for coming on Hardball tonight. Thank you.